this electrical panel you can see here this panel is of 11 kb that is to start and stop power supply of 11 kilo volt this panel is used now inside of this panel you can see vacuum circuit breaker is installed i am opening this you can see here vacuum circuit breaker is installed we removed this circuit breaker from here for maintenance after removing vacuum circuit breaker you can see this chamber here here you can see it is completely open now inside of this panel you can see this contact here is known as bus bar you can see below three bus bar and above here three bus bar are given it means three bus bar are for incoming power supply and three bus bar are for outgoing power supply so for now we took the vacuum circuit breaker from this panel for maintenance you can see three to four breakers are here for maintenance this jaw type contact here this contact is known as female jaw contact bus bar which i shown you in electrical panel that one is male contact this female contact here goes inside of bus bar and get mounted in this jaw contact you can see there is a movement movement is required because when we rack in the breaker then with the bus bar it gets connected properly for this movement is given here it means when we rack in the breaker then automatically there is a movement and it will get connected properly if this contact does not get connected with bus bar properly then sparking will generate this is why a movement is provided here so that there will be a proper connection. Now this breaker here, I removed the top cover of breaker. When we see inside of this, there are all mechanical parts. Only 4 to 5 parts are of electrical. One among these is coil here, one coil here, one motor here and some electrical contact here. What is the working of all of these? We will understand this later. For now we will understand how mechanical parts work. First of all you have to turn on this breaker. Then for turning on breaker, what you have to do, this spring here, we need to charge this spring. To charge this spring, a handle is given here. I am showing you once how to charge this. To charge spring, put this spring charging handle here. After that, push this downwards like this. Okay, see one thing here, there will be a little movement. When spring is charging, there is a movement. Look here as well as here. Okay, you heard the knock sound. This means that spring is charged now. Whenever you go for maintenance of breaker, at that time, if you charge the spring, then never keep your hand inside from now. There are all mechanical parts who does movement. If breaker is on and still your hand is inside, then you may encounter an injury. So don't take your hand inside when spring gets charged. So I charge the spring. After this, if I want to start the breaker, then for turning on this, I have two options. First I can turn on this mechanically and second is to turn on electrically. To start mechanically, here you will find a push button. When I press this, breaker will turn on. Just see here. You saw when I pressed this, breaker turned on. Now if we want to turn off this breaker, then for turning off this push button which is given here, we have to press this. On pressing this, you can see breaker turned off. Now if I press this button again, then it will not turn on. It will not get on because spring here, spring got discharged completely. It means in this vacuum circuit breaker, there is energy and to store that energy, we connected a spring here. If energy is stored in spring, then only you can turn on and off this breaker. To charge this spring, you saw how manually we can charge this spring. If you don't want to charge this manually, then for this, a spring charging motor is given here. That is, the way we charge this manually, by putting this rod here, To do the same work, a motor is provided here. Now suppose through this motor, I want to charge spring. Then on this motor, you can see it is written 220 volt AC or DC. It means if I provide 220 volt AC power supply or DC power supply to this, then in this condition, my motor will turn on. So by providing power supply to motor, we can charge the spring. Friends, keep one thing in your mind. This motor here, operating voltage required to operate motor can be different for every company who manufacture breaker. In some of the breaker, 110 volt is written on motor. It means to operate motor, you have to provide only 110 volt power supply. For now, breaker I have in this breaker, motor which is connected operates on 220 volt. Besides on this motor, 75 R per minute is written. It means speed of this motor is 75 rounds per minute. So by providing electrical power supply to this motor, we can charge the spring. Now after charging the spring, if you want to turn on breaker, then in this condition what you have to do, closing coil which is mounted here, 
you have to provide electrical power supply to this. Now how much voltage we have to provide to closing coil for this you have to go through circuit diagram. For now suppose this closing coil operates on 24 volt. So what I will do I will provide 24 volt power supply to this. When it receives power supply spring here spring gets pulled and when it gets pulled breaker will turn on. I am showing you once. I am pulling this upwards just see here breaker will turn on. You saw when spring moved upwards breaker turned on. Now if you want to turn off this breaker by providing electrical power supply then in this condition tripping coil which is placed here you have to provide power supply to this. So when we provide power supply to this tripping coil then the spring here goes inside. I am showing you manually how it is done. Look I am pressing this breaker will turn off. You saw when I pressed this spring our breaker turned off. So how to turn on and off this breaker manually and how to turn on and off by providing electrical power supply you understood this. Apart from all these some contact are given here. What is the working of these let's understand this also. First of all let me tell you this switch you can see here this switch is our NONC contact. We use this contact for indication of spring charging. For on indication off indication besides many interlockings are used for breaker for all these also it is used. Besides you can see a relay is also connected here. We call this relay as anti pumping relay. What is the work of anti pumping relay let's understand this once. To turn on this breaker when we provide power supply to this closing coil then through closing coil our breaker will turn on. Now if your breaker turned on and after turning on breaker if you provide power supply to the coil regularly then your coil will burn out. That is your coil will become faulty. So to this closing coil power should not be supplied again. For this we use anti pumping relay. Let's understand this once again. When your breaker is turned on after breaker is turned on to this coil power should not be supplied. For this we use anti pumping relay. I hope you understood this much. Now when we go for maintenance of breaker at the time of maintenance coil connected here along with the motor also we have to measure resistance of this. How to measure resistance here let's understand. See I have a multimeter here I selected the resistance position here. Now what is the resistance of this motor let's check this. When resistance is checked we get to know our motor is alright or faulty. So from motor this wire is coming out and one this wire is also there. Connect the probes of multimeter with these wires and measure resistance. So you can see here we are getting motor resistance as 39.6 ohm. It means motor right now is in proper condition. The way we measured resistance of motor in the same way resistance of tripping coil and along with this resistance of closing coil also we have to measure. Value of resistance you will get whether it is perfect or not for this you have to check data sheet of motor. Or if we did the maintenance of breaker before at that time what was the resistance of coil by checking that you can compare that this coil is proper or not. After the measurement of resistance of motor and coil counter meter which is given here you have to note down the reading from this counter meter. You can see here it is written 234. It means that breaker here this breaker is turned on and off 234 times. If I turn on and off this breaker right now then reading will be increased by 1. That is it will become 235. At the time of maintenance of breaker we just have to see that whether there are loose connection of electrical parts or not or is there any kind of rusting in mechanical parts or any nut bolt is loose or not all these things we have to check. Along with this we have to clean the mechanism inside of this breaker and again you need to do greasing here. Through this pin we provide power supply to motor and coil. Along with this NONC contact which is there in breaker when NONC contact changes output command which is generated which goes to indication lamp of panel and interlocking for this also this pin is used. So till now we only understood the working of breaker and along with this what all things we have to check during maintenance we understood this also. What all things I told you apart from this contact here we have to check these contact also. What we have to check let's understand this once. Contact of this breaker here to check these there are total three ways. First of all take the multimeter and through this check the continuity. Second is contact of this breaker here measure the resistance of this. Third is to measure IR value of contact. So first of all let's check the continuity. Right now breaker is in off condition. In off condition I must not get any continuity. So look here. Incoming power supply terminal here and outgoing power supply terminal here with these two connect probes of multimeter. You can see there is no beep sound from multimeter. When I touch these with each other 
beep sound is coming. When we connect here, no beep sound is coming. It means contact is in open condition. So we have to check continuity for all the three jaw contact. Here also we are not getting any continuity. Now we have to turn on this breaker. So I am turning on this. Okay, I turned on the breaker. After turning on breaker, I am checking the continuity here. You can see multimeter is showing the continuity. And along with this, 0 0.3 ohm resistance it is showing. I will check all the three contact. Here also we are getting continuity. And here also we are getting continuity. It means breaker is closed. Now see one thing here. Through this multimeter, when I measure resistance of contact, then I am getting 0 0.2 ohm resistance. It means some resistance it is showing. When we measure resistance through multimeter, then we don't get accurate value that contact here of breaker, what is the actual resistance of this. If you want to measure accurate value of resistance, then for this, by using CRM kit, you need to measure resistance. Through CRM kit, how to measure resistance, let's understand this also. This meter which you can see here, this is known as CRM. Full form of CRM is contact resistance meter. It means through this meter, what is the resistance of contact is measured. Now inside of this meter, you can see how it looks. Here you will get total 5 terminals to which you have to do connection of cable. How to do cable connection? For this, there is a diagram in CRM kit. So I am not explaining you everything. Now this kit here, output cable of this, that is cable which we connected here, we will connect these with breaker. You can see here I have total 4 crocodile clamp. We have to connect these with this contact. What you have to do, take the black clamp and connect this below here in this way. After this, take the second clamp and connect at the same point. Now take red clamp and connect this at upper side in this way. So to measure resistance of contact, we connected all the clamps. Remember one thing, during the measurement of resistance of contact, your breaker must be in on condition. So all the connections are done. Let's turn on the power supply here and measure the resistance. Here, a switch is given to turn on power. I am turning on this. After turning on this, here you can see two display are given. Here it will show current value and here it will show resistance that how much resistance value is there for contact. Here test button is given. I am turning on this. Okay, testing is initiated. We will get the value here. As you can see here, 71.5 micro ohm resistance we are getting. It means it is very much less than 1 ohm. You can see the accurate value of this resistance that is 71.5 micro ohm. So through this value, we got that contact of breaker here, what is the internal resistance of this contact? Right now we measured resistance of only one pole. The way we did the measurement of this pole, in the same way we have to do measurement of remaining. So I am skipping this now. So how to do continuity of this breaker and how to measure resistance of the contact, we understood this. Now apart from these two, you have to measure IR value of this breaker. IR value means insulation resistance. To measure insulation resistance, you need to use insulation tester. So I connected cables with this insulation tester. After this, I am taking clamp of this cable to connect with this breaker. Right now breaker is in on condition. In on condition, from one pole to another pole, you have to measure resistance between these two. So I am connecting this here and connecting second one here. So we will measure the resistance between these two. So after connecting these, I am turning on the insulation tester. I turned on this. You can see insulation tester is on now. You can set the testing voltage also that is at how much voltage you want to do testing. Right now it is 5000 volt so at 5000 volt only I am testing. After setting the voltage simply we have to press this test button. On pressing this you can see testing is started. You can see here 4985 volt is injected to this breaker. After this IR value will be shown here. It takes a little time. You can see here, this is IR value. So you have to wait for one minute. After waiting for a minute, insulation tester here, this insulation tester will show you IR value. You can see here, 222 giga ohm IR value it is showing. It means both the poles of this breaker, there is a huge gap between these poles, that is insulation resistance is very high. Now I am turning off this insulation tester. After turning off, don't touch the terminal here. If you touch this, then you will encounter with an electric shock. There will be electric shock because to measure insulation resistance, we injected high voltage. That voltage is stored here right now. So before touching this, you need to discharge this. How to discharge this? Look here. I have a discharge rod here. 
Now I will connect this with this terminal. When we connect this here, terminal will get discharged completely. After discharging this, you can touch this. Right now we measured IR value between these two pole. After this, between these two pole, after that between these two pole, you have to measure IR value. I am skipping the process for now. So in this breaker, how we measured IR value in on condition, we understood this. Now I am turning off this breaker. I turned off the breaker. Now again I have to measure IR value of this. I have to measure IR value between this contact and this contact. So I am removing this from here and I am connecting this here. Now I am turning on this insulation tester. After turning on this, again I will press this test button so that insulation tester can measure insulation resistance. You can see here it is displaying IR value. IR value we measured just now is the gap between this contact and this contact that is how much IR value is there between these two. The way we measured insulation resistance of this in the same way you have to check for remaining. I am skipping this also. So friends today through this video I explained you VCB breaker which is there, how does it work and during maintenance what all things we have to check. Friends I hope you like this video. If you like this video, do like, share and comment on this video. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching this video.